Thistle. Dibdi is here with the papers. Um, you're talking about uh, that vote on repealing Obamacare yesterday in the U.S. Senate. Dibdi. That's right. Uh, U.S. Senate Republicans voted to be begin repealing legislation that essentially will destroy Obamacare or aims to destroy Obamacare. The conservative paper Washington Times says the vote marks a high point after weeks of stalled voting and frustration for Republicans, but warns that the fight is only just beginning. For the editors at the New York Times, though, it's a health care travesty. The paper berates Senate Ma Majority Leader Mitch McConnell for, quote, browbeating and cajoling 50 members of the caucus to vote. The paper says in the end, he doesn't even care which proposals are passed, but out of pride, pressure and sheer cussedness, he just wants to get a bill out of the Senate. There's also a lot of uh, chatter in the paper about Senator John McCain, his uh, first appearance at that vote since his uh, brain cancer diagnosis. That's right, and it's drawing a bit of criticism, at least from this article in Slate, which calls his speech uh, Sorkin-esque. For this Slate writer, his speech showed what he's done throughout his c career, presenting himself as a, quote, paragon of neutral reason. But the reality is that uh, John McCain is a Republican who, uh, in majority, votes with the party and with Donald Trump's agenda, despite urging Congress not to bend to Trump's will. The Huffington Post is also pretty critical, saying that McCain's speech did draw applause and hugs, but the irony is not lost on anyone that he was receiving top medical care funded by taxpayers while uh, seeking to uh, re repeal a piece of legislation that would deny the same rights to millions of other Americans. Going to talk uh, about Lebanon now. The Iran backed Hezbollah group says it's uh, nearing a victory against Sunni militants. Now, this is in the uh, region of Arsal near Syria. That's right. It's on the bordering border region between Lebanon and Syria. Let's start with a pro-Hezbollah paper, Al-Akbar, which says on its front page that the end of uh, al-Nusra and the Islamic State group in Lebanon, in particular in this Arsal region, is being negotiated. The paper uh, hails Hezbollah's success in chasing out the Sunni jihadists from the region, a region that's actually surrounded by Shia villages. The paper says a victory speech by Hezbollah's leader may be imminent. Now, Al-Arab, which is a pan Arab London-based paper is far more critical in an opinion piece asking what Hezbollah wants in return for chasing out the jihadists. The objective, the writer says, is to reinforce Iran's influence in Lebanon and transform it, I quote, into an Iranian colony. Dipsy's going right around the world in this paper review. Japan now, uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe facing yet another nepotism scandal. That's right. This one is to do with uh, favoritism. Lawmakers have actually been grilling prime, the prime minister over whether he helped a close friend who's the director of an educational institution gain permission for a new veterinary department, despite widespread consensus that it wasn't actually needed. Now, uh, it's one too many scandals for Japanese voters. Abe's popularity is sinking, as you see in a cartoon from the Japan Times, which really uh, uh, sends up uh, this, his political situation, his uh, popularity has plunged to 30% in light of recent scandals. Yet, the Japan Times says the main opposition group, which is the Democratic Party, has been slow to respond. The paper says it needs to decide if it will give up fighting altogether or if it's going to join forces with other opposition groups and try and push the embattled prime minister out of power. Right around the world for this next one, a study uh, sounding the alarm on male fertility. That's right. This is story has been really picked up by a lot of papers, in fact, all the major papers today, uh, including the British tabloid The Sun, which says that sperm counts and concentration of Western men has plummeted by 60% in the last four decades. So this only affects, according to the study, men from the Western world, so Australia, the US and Europe. Scientists say it's a wake-up call, saying things like pesticides, poor diets, smoking and obesity are all hampering male fertility. Some papers fear this could lead to the extinction of the human race, which uh, I think is a bit of a stretch, but mm. it certainly calls for concern about the realities and consequences of modern living. Too many Kit Kats, that's what it is. <laughs> now, finally, um, the mayors of three of the world's most unfortunately named towns, they're, they're meeting for a bit of a party. That's right. Um, uh, <laughs> the mayors of Dull, which is a Scottish town, <laughs> And Bland, which is yeah. an Australian town, are gathering for a party, according to the British paper The Times. These festivities are taking place.
place a week before the American town of Boring, which is no joke, it's no, actually called Boring, boring <laughs> prepares its annual Boring and Dull Day. The town's <laughs> joining forces in the hopes of cashing in on their mediocrity. Appropriately, the mayors oh. of Dull and Bland will hold a meet and greet at a local cinema, which, let's be honest, is not very festive or raucous at all. I like the sound of that. There is nothing dull, there is nothing bland, there is nothing boring about uh, France 24, is there? <laughs> Nobody said anything. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Dipti. Uh, we'll